All right, I've got a crankshaft here out of an engine. The crankshaft is uh, uh, the rotating mass that uh, allows an engine to be able to um, transfer that reciprocating motion from the pistons into a rotary motion um, for the rest of the vehicle in order to propel it forward. So this particular crankshaft, I've got it mounted here on these V-blocks. The purpose of the V-blocks is one, to hold the crankshaft up. This is a fairly heavy crankshaft. But also now I can rotate the crankshaft similar to how it would rotate inside of the engine. I can make some important measurements um, in regards to the crankshaft um, as it's positioned in these V-blocks. All right, so uh, the naming conventions on this crankshaft, I've got um, these uh, uh, main bearing portions. You can see that they're in, uh, in line with the crankshaft. These uh, main bearing journals um, support the crankshaft with there's bearings in there. Uh, they support um, the crankshaft as it rotates around. Then I have the connecting rod journals uh, that are found on the exterior uh, of the outer portions of the crankshaft. The connecting rods are connected here and uh, the pistons drive them up and down. So if we're coming down uh, here into the, um, the main bearing itself, if we look right here in the very corner, there's a rounded edge right here. So this isn't a square cut all the way across this uh, journal. Um, right here at the edge, it, it, it rounds up, and that's known as the fillet of the crankshaft. If this was a square cut, if this just came to a sharp angle and then came up, I would have some significant pressures uh, placed on that edge, and that's where I would see um, the cracking uh, most likely occur is right here at the fillet. So we want to, when we're doing a visual inspection of the crankshaft, we want to look right here at the fillet and, and identify whether or not uh, we've got a crack here. There's some Magnaflux uh, techniques that can be uh, utilized as far as crack detection. Um, we're not going to talk about those in this video. Uh, what we're mainly concerned about in the, for this crankshaft is we're going to talk about warpage of the crankshaft. And what that means is as the connecting rods are putting a lot of pressure on this crankshaft, it has a tendency to cause it to want to, to warp, meaning that it's not in a direct line along the main bearing um, journals. So in order to, to check for warpage, we've installed it here on the, these V-blocks. We're going to put a dial indicator right here in the center of the crankshaft, and we're going to determine whether or not there's any movement um, that would indicate that we have a warpage there. So I'm going to put my dial indicator right here in place. I'm just going to rest the tip um, right on the uh, main bearing journal. I want to put it a little bit outside of the main bearing journal just to ensure that I have uh, that I don't hit into the oil passage as I'm rotating this around. So we're going to take our dial indicator. I'll go ahead and zero that out. So we've zeroed our dial indicator. As you can see from the dial indicator, this is a one thousandth of an inch uh, precision dial indicator. So then as I rotate it, I'm going to be looking for changes in the d direction of the needle and looking to see if there's any warpage. So I rotate that around. Okay, I've got my dial indicator set up, and now I'm going to be looking for um, any movement in and out that would indicate that this, this crankshaft is actually warped. So the dial indicator is at one one thousandth of an inch. Every notch in the dial indicator would indicate that. I'm just going to go ahead and rotate it slowly, looking for any high spots. Once I've identified the high spot, I would mark it with a permanent marker, and then I would move on to the next main journal. I would check for the um, 
the crankshaft uh, uh, warpage there, move on to the next journal. If my crankshaft is really warped, I should see the lines would match up as I go down the main journal. Now it's possible I could have warpage in several different directions based on the force that's applied to that, but this is a good indication of whether or not the crankshaft is warped. Now I have to check service information in order to determine whether or not uh, your crankshaft falls within specifications of um, warpage, um, but typically if the crankshaft is warped out of specifications, it's going to require replacement.